Hi, you guys. I've just discovered something. This camera that I have actually makes me look fatter than I am. Um, it has a tendency to make everything wider. I don't know why the webcam is like that, but it's not a complete... So when, when I look at myself in the mirror, I look skinnier than when I look at myself in the camera. So um, I'm not sure why that is, but I'm weighing about 128 pounds now. And when I look in the mirror, the stomach looks just like almost absolutely flat. But here, it's kind of pulling it out a little bit. So anyways, what I wanted to say is my last video, I was talking about how I believe that the Jesuits deliberately have created the lie in mainstream medicine that if you take Seroquel, you have to gain weight. And the reason I believe they're doing this is because they want to discourage people from taking Seroquel because Ser Jesus Christ made Seroquel. And let me get some better lighting here. Jesus Christ made Seroquel. And he, uh, I just cannot imagine Jesus creating a drug that would make people fat. And here's what I think is going on. Um, one of the Jesuits' main weapons in controlling and destroying their enemies is to infect them with their super yeast. The super yeast is a yeast bacterium. It's not really, it doesn't really have all the properties of a yeast. It doesn't have all the properties of a bacteria. It's a hybrid between the two. But it's more like a yeast than it is a bacterium. You don't get a fever with it. And when you're infected with it, it's a very resilient germ. What I mean by that is, uh, it actually eats its own poop, which means if you try to kill it, then you expl it, 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 when the germ dies, it explodes and releases its toxins, which acts as fertilizer to any remaining germ. Now, this germ is very unique in that it needs for its survival the same nutrients that human beings need for their survival. And that's, that isn't good. And it actually makes its own food in its toxins. So once this yeast toxins get into your body, it sets your body up so that if you if so that if you ingest or inhale this yeast and it gets into your system, you've got the conditions set up in your body for the yeast to multiply very rapidly because it eats its own toxins. And what the Jesuits have been doing is they've been putting yeast toxin in the new in the new cocky clouds and even they realize now that because my gale shield is expanding that the way to defeat uh defeat me and my followers is to get us all infected with yeast or yeast toxin if they can't give the person a full-blown yeast infection I call it the super yeast then they'll just put the toxin in their body and the toxin can cause problems all by itself. For instance, um, when Jesus showed me my future, if I wouldn't follow the Gale commandments and if I kept going the way I was doing last month, my future would have been where the yeast toxin would have taken over my nerve cells and, I, and would have caused me to get a case of schizophrenia. So basically, they they Jesuits love to infect their enemies with the yeast and or its toxins for several reasons. They can induce mental illness with it. They can induce physical illness. Ideally, they can get both physical and mental illness in, in the person. And if this happens, what they can do is make the physical illness appear to be the result of a hypochondriac type of a personality. Because the yeast gives you really strange symptoms. You start becoming allergic to all sorts of foods. You, uh... You, uh, um, you, you can eat like a pig and not gain a pound, which is why in 2011, when you see pictures of me in 2011, I was way too skinny. I looked like a skeleton and I was eating like a pig, but the yeast, I had a systemic yeast infection from head to toe and that yeast was getting everything first. Like I told you, the yeast needs the same, has the same nutritional requirements as the human body. It makes it very deadly. Okay. Now the Je Jesuits are in a unique situation with me. Um, they, my yeast infection has been cured because I've been on Seroquel and also some other things happened, which I described in some earlier videos. And now, so what the best way for the, the, 
the Jesuits are hoping and praying they can get a relapse of my yeast infection, but it's never going to happen as long as I keep following the Gale commandments and I take Seroquel and do everything, like go for my walks. Let me tell you why the walks are important. Um, if you take Seroquel for yeast, and Seroquel is the only cure out there for this super yeast, nothing else will work. It has Once the infection becomes systemic, there's a 60% mortality rate. Because like I said, if you kill the yeast, you actually make things worse because it explodes its toxins, which acts like fertilizer to any remaining yeast. And the yeast infection just gradually gets worse and worse, and that's what happened to me. I was taking Nystatin. I was taking Deflucan. I was taking everything, Amphotericin. Um, it would see, it, what, it will, what it did was it killed the yeast, and it seemed like it was helping, but it only lasted for like two or three days. And then after that, I started feeling bad again. And that's because the dead yeast also, just dead yeast feeds any remaining yeast because the dead yeast have yeast toxin in them. These yeast are like cannibals. They eat other yeast. So if the if the if let's say you're killing a bunch of these yeast, and it not only eats some, um, it not only eats some um, its own type yeast, the super yeast, it eats the candida albicans yeast and any other yeast because that's like like it's that's like giving it a perfect food. So that's why it's so deadly. So anyways, to make a long story short, what I'm trying to say is uh, my Brent has been talking with me brain to brain. This sounds right, and he might correct me later. I can make a corrective video. But Jesus did order me to walk for half an hour a day. He wouldn't say why. But I think I'm starting to figure it out. Um, the problem is when you're on Seroquel, Seroquel doesn't kill the yeast, and that's why it works. Instead, it flushes the yeast and its toxins out of the body. It acts like a detoxifying agent. And that's how it cures the patient of the yeast infection, by flushing the yeast and or its toxins live without killing them out of the body. Killing the yeast is a disaster. It just, because once that yeast is dead, it becomes yeast food for any remaining living yeast. So it doesn't work. You can't kill it. You got to flush it out live. So that's what Seroquel does. And Seroquel does it probably more efficiently than any other method. Okay, then, now there's one problem though. And the Jesuits are, have brilliant, you know, horrible doctors on their side. So they said, oh boy, Gail's been cured of her yeast infection. Shucks, man. We wanted to destroy her and make it look like she did it herself by her own insanity. And now Jesus, we, Zach Knight hates Sarah. Well, he hates it because, for instance, they gave Dr., I'm not, they gave Governor Rick Scott uh, schizophrenia. I think it was schizophrenia because he had a yeast infection in his brain. My men brought him into therapy, um, into the hospital, and we gave him, I think they put him on Seroquel or something, but they got rid of it. So I think he's okay now. But for a while there, he was saying some crazy things about me, claiming I was against public. So this is what Sarah, this is what the yeast can do. Seroquel is the only cure. But here's the problem. If you get on Seroquel and you ha have a history of the yeast infection and which means that if you get any, and now what the Jesuits are doing is they're, they're saying, oh, shucks, we got Gail on, Jesus has Gail on Seroquel, and we want her to get the infection back. So we're going to put yeast toxin in the new cocky and just explode tons and tons of new cocky all around her. And so this, then there's another thing they're doing. The problem, the reason a lot of people gain weight on Seroquel is because, um, when the body, when the Seroquel removes the toxins from the cells and they, and they start floating around and everything, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but if the body cannot efficiently process the toxins out, like maybe, maybe you're not drinking enough water, maybe you're not getting enough exercise to get the blood moving, then what happens is the body will um, redeposit those toxins back into the fat cells to protect the body from a toxic overload. And that's why you gain weight on Seroquel. I believe that's it. There may be other factors involved. So what the Jesuits are doing is they, they're saying, aha. So you're saying, well, how come before Seroquel, because um, the person was skinny, and they, they must have had a whole bunch of toxins in their body. I'm not sure how it works. But Seroquel somehow puts more toxins into the blood. Which, and the, if it doesn't get processed out efficiently, it ends up going back into the fat cells. 
And I guess the body just goes into shock thinking, oh, all these toxins are out loose in the blood, put them in the fat cells so the body can be functioning, you know? So that's why you need to exercise. And Zach Knight is making things worse. He's, what he's doing is he's putting yeast toxin and all these mukaki. So let's say you're on Seroquel, you already have toxins in your cell, you know, in your bloodstream because the Seroquel is taking all the toxins out. Then you breathe in yeast toxin. Now your body goes into toxic overload and you get fat. And that's why, that's the number one reason people on Seroquel gain weight. They've got too many toxins floating around in their blood and the body puts them in the fat cells to protect itself because the toxins are not being processed out through the urine and the sweat. So if you're on Seroquel, and you don't want to turn into a fat pig and end up with all sorts of health problems associated with that, like high blood pressure, cancer, heart attacks, diabetes, you need to exercise to help the body to process taking the toxins out. And um, I've increased my exercise now to an hour, but Jesus said at least half an hour a day, and it needs to be outside. The reason why is because Jesus apparently is putting something in the air to counter all of the toxins the Jesuits are putting in the Nukaki clouds, which are exploding all over the earth, so that anybody who's on Seroquel, if they breathe in these toxins, they're going to get fat if they're not exercising. And it won't matter, it won't matter whether you're eating a diet low in calories or not, you will still get fat. The key is you need to go outside and exercise at least a half an hour a day. More is better because that means when you're out there exercising, plus Jesus is putting something in the air. So anyways, I've discovered also calories in, calories out is the best weight management plan. Jesus put me on that. But the, what I'm trying to say is I really believe, here's what I look like with this camera that makes me look fatter than I am right now. So, I'm at about 128 right now on Seroquel, but following the Gale commandments and exercise, I've upped my exercise to about 50 minutes, 50 minutes, five zero minutes outside every day. And that's helping tremendously. And that's because, um, that's because you cannot lose weight on Seroquel unless you're out, unless you're outside exercising because of the toxin factor. The body is going to store the toxins in the fat cells if it has no place else to put them. Because that's a safe place for the body to chug them away. And um, the problem, see, before you get, before I got on Seroquel, I had toxins everywhere in my body. They were in my nervous system. They were in my heart cells. They were in my liver cells. So my body was just so overwhelmed with toxins, I think it about gave up. And it was putting some of them in the fat cells, but it was just so overwhelmed. I was probably 60% dead, yeah, really. There was hardly anything I could eat. Jesus saved my life when he put me on Seroquel, okay? Now the body's getting finally getting nutrition, and uh, the cells are being purged of the toxins. So the body's going, the body automatically does what's best for itself. And so now it's saying, ooh, her cells are now getting pretty healthy. She doesn't have this yeast infection throughout her whole body, but there's a little extra toxins and we don't want them floating around and causing problems. So let's store them in the fat cells. So that's what it does. And it's going to keep doing that unless, it, unless these toxins are processed out efficiently. They will not be processed out efficiently unless you walk because Jesuits are using Nukaki filled with yeast toxin, dumping it all over the planet on purpose for people like myself who are on Seroquel so that if we take Seroquel, we get fat. And then Jesuits are spreading the lie and all of mainstream medicine saying, oh, a very serious side effect of Seroquel is weight gain. And of course, they neglect to mention that this is because we're putting yeast toxin in all the new coffee that we're exploding all over the earth so that anybody on Seroquel is going to get fat. So solution, go out and walk every day, at least a half an hour. Do pay attention to calories in, calories out. And... Um, so, you know, I guess I'm not, but I do know you need to exercise. You cannot lose weight on Seroquel or get anywhere near a bikini figure if you don't work out. And it needs to be outside. You need to sweat a little. You need to breathe in some of the medicine that Jesus put in the air. And that's what I'm discovering. I'm just letting you know it's working for me. I look pretty good right now.